Pi. This time we're going to learn a powerful feature found in many plugins from Melder Production called Multi-Parameters. The idea is to control a multitude of parameters by a single controller. For instance, it can be used to transform an EQ setting into something completely different. In the following example, I control nine parameters by one multi-parameter. Come inside, rest your body on my heart, my baby. Come inside, rest your body on my heart, my baby. Or you could build a one-knob compressor. So, why would you need that feature anyway? Well, first thing that comes to mind is to build presets for a live performance set. You can make good use of that method to morph from one sound to another. Then it can be used for making so-called active presets like in the case of M Dynamics that I just demonstrated. Let's have a look at how it works. The multi-parameters are usually hidden in the meters section. It's located on the right side of the plugins interface. Not all plugins possess it though only those where it's appropriate. I'm going to use M Dynamic EQ to demonstrate this feature. When clicked, the plugin will show the multi-parameters panel. Here, we can see four multi-parameters and each of them can be assigned to control any number of parameters. To do that, click on this icon and in the pop-up window, select the Clean and Learn option. Immediately, the multi-parameters button changes its name to Rec meaning the multi-parameter is ready to be assigned. Now, if you touch any controller on the plugin's interface, the controller will become linked to the multi-parameter. Moreover, by moving the controller, you set its range, which will be used by the multi-parameter for this particular controller. Don't worry if you make a mistake. Later on, you'll have an opportunity to fix that. As the name suggests, all previously assigned controllers will be deleted or cleaned, and the new ones will be linked or learned. When finished, click on the multi-parameters button again to quit the record mode. You can always link extra parameters if necessary. For this, select the Learn option. In this case, all earlier assigned parameters will be kept and new ones will be added. When done, don't forget to turn off the record mode. If needed, you can swap assigned parameters between the multi-parameters. To achieve this, choose the Reorder To option and then a desired multi-parameter. We'll talk about Attach MIDI Controller option in a tutorial about MIDI controllers. Now, when we've got parameters linked to the multi-parameter, let's move on to the multi-parameter itself. To open the multi-parameters window, click on its button. The Parameters panel is where we find the list of all parameters we've just linked. If you wish to add more parameters to the list, click on the plus button and in the pop-up window, select a parameter you'd like to add, then click on OK. To delete a parameter, first select it and then click on the trash button. On the right, we can see additional controllers related to the way parameters are controlled. Let's start from the top. The parameter is a handy button if you wish to replace an existing parameter by another one. First, select the parameter you'd like to replace in the parameters list. Next, click on the parameter button and in the pop-up window, select a new one. Then, click on OK. The range mode defines the way a multi-parameter controls parameters. In the up and down mode, the value knob sets an initial parameter's value. The depth determines the parameter's interpolation depth. It can't be higher than the value set by the value knob. In the full range mode, the range is always equal to the value set by the depth knob. However, unlike the previous mode, the value set by the value knob can be off a range's center. Hence, the depth parameter overwrites limitations set by the value knob. The up only and down only modes are self-explanatory. Here, the value knob sets the initial parameter value and the depth knob defines the depth of the change. 
up and down correspondingly. The interval mode sets the range in which the transition will happen. It's achieved by two knobs, the value and maximal value. If the value is higher than the maximal value, then the modulation's direction will get reversed. You can also invert the modulation in any mode by selecting the Invert option. The Show Transformation Shape button opens a transformation curve editor. The axis at the bottom represents the input values and the vertical one, the output ones. The editor gives a very powerful method to modify a parameter's behavior and can turn it upside down. In the top left corner, we find the behavior panel. Four different modes can be selected here. Normal, switch, trigger, and banks. In normal mode, the multi-parameter interpolates between two given values of a parameter. The speed knob defines the pace of this transition. If it's set to zero, then any change will take effect immediately. Values higher than zero can help with smoothing out a multi-parameter's movement if necessary. This can be useful for creating effects as well as avoiding zipper noise that can occur when changing certain parameters. Switch mode works as a typical on-off switch whose on and off states correspond to minimum and maximum values set in the range mode. Switch time sets the time it takes to get from on state to off or vice versa. On the plugin's interface, it's presented by a button instead of a slider. Trigger mode works as a one-shot event. That is, after clicking on it, a parameter crosses over from its minimum value to its maximum and back. In this case, the switch time sets the time necessary for the full up and down pass. Both last modes react to a mouse click off event, important for live performance. We'll talk about banks mode in the next part of this series as it deserves a special tutorial. Value mode menu allows you to select a type of units that will be displayed over a multi-parameters slider over here. The first option is percents. When selected, the multi-parameters values are shown as percents from 0 to 100. Useful when you have assigned more than one parameter. By first parameter takes the units of the first parameter in the parameters list. This is handy when building active presets. By bank's name option reflects bank names as a multi-parameter interpolates between them. We'll talk about it in the banks mode tutorial. Finally, set current value as default button saves a current multi-parameters position as default. When saved, every right click on the multi-parameter will reset it to this value. Again, useful when building active presets. I've mentioned active presets a few times by now, and you may be wondering, what is that? Well, it's presets we see when we open some plugins for the first time, like in M Dynamics, for example. They can also be called easy presets. Frequently, they're aimed at beginners for whom to dig such a sophisticated plugin like M Dynamics can be overwhelming. Or they could be a good starting point even for an advanced user. Anyway, the idea is to assign multi-parameters to necessary controllers and to put the multi-parameters on the front interface. You already know the first half, so let's learn the second one and for that I'll introduce the last panel. We haven't talked about that yet, the information. The function of this panel is to design an active preset interface. There's no switch to turn on to create a new active preset. This role is given to the name field. It works like this, no name, no controller in an active preset. However, as soon as I type something in, the active preset controller will be created. To see it, I must leave the plugin's edit mode. And here's my one knob compressor. 
If you want a multi-parameter to have a name but not to be present on the active preset panel, put an asterisk at the first symbol. As we have four multi-parameters, we can have up to four controllers in an active preset. They can be knobs or buttons. The type is defined by a type of mode set in the behavior panel. Putting a name in the group field creates a frame within which a multi-parameter is placed. If I put the same group name for two different multi-parameters, they'll share the same frame. Big Control sets the size of the controller. We're given two options here, big one when it's on and a small one when it's off. Ticking the same row checkbox puts the current controller next to the previous one. The checkboxes option is relevant only when the multi-parameter is in the banks mode. The collapsed checkbox makes the group frame collapsed by default. Useful for more complex active presets, like in the MXXX for example. If you'd like to add some description to controllers, you can do that by adding some notes onto the specific multi-parameter information pop-up window. To open it, click on the Edit Information About the Multi-Parameter button. Just remember that those notes will be accessible in the group frame only. Next time, we'll discuss the Banks mode. Bye for now.